Hey guys, Thunder E here, and this is the video you've been waiting for. I'm talking about gaming on the Galaxy S21 Ultra. Yes, we took it out of its case. Actually, it's not really a case. That is more of a UV wireless sanitizing case, which is great. I think everyone should get it. Check out the link down below. But anyway, thanks for jumping in. And uh, this video, we're gonna give you a deep dive into the performance and of course the capabilities of the Galaxy S21 Ultra when it comes to gaming. So we'll be covering Android games. We'll cover some emulators because you guys asked for that. And we'll show you some game streaming as well. Now, the Galaxy S21 Ultra comes in at 6.8 inches. It's a big boy. Uh, and this houses the brand new Snapdragon 888 processor. What does that mean? It means this is the fastest processor on the land in terms of Android processors. And it also comes with up to 16 gigabytes of RAM. So you can have a lot of things running in the background. That is really, really good. Now, the battery is 5,000 milliamps, and I will say this right off the bat, I am very happy Samsung included a massive battery into this bad boy. It gives you a lot of performance to do the things you need to do performance-wise. Now, that display is a 120 hertz display, variable refresh rate, and what that means, it means is that your refresh rate changes to match what you're doing on screen. And what I've noticed while using this device is that if you're not doing anything, it drops down to 60 Hertz. Now, Samsung says it can drop down to 11 Hertz. What I did find out it's 60 Hertz using the inbuilt uh, refresh rate uh, indicator that you can see on the top left-hand corner of the screen of the device. This is built into Android 11. So any Android 11 device, you can actually turn this on in developer options. But what's really cool is when you go to a site like Test UFO, you can see it actually changes if there's nothing, no activity on screen. So 60 to 120 Hertz. That is actually pretty cool. Now you've got stereo speakers here, and if you wanna hear more on the speakers, go to our speaker test and you'll find out more. But you're here for gaming capabilities and what this device can do gaming wise. So let's not waste any time and let's jump into our very first game, which will be playing Call of Duty Mobile, and we're playing at the highest settings possible on this device, as you can clearly see. And uh, let's give you just a quick clip and then we'll talk about it. So Call of Duty Mobile performance wise did as you would expect, 60 frames per second. And if you guys don't know, we use GameBench to do our uh, benchmarks for any of our Android games. It's a great tool, uses the link down below. You can actually get it yourself. Uh, but what I like about it is I can see that it does 60 frames per second at a 99% stability. CPU usage is 11.82%, uh, but in terms of GPU, we have no information yet because it's still not registered for uh, game bench, but performance wise, it's pretty good as you would expect here. It's also felt really smooth while gaming and playing uh, Call of Duty Mobile. Now, when we move over to a game like PUBG Mobile, of course, you know, we have a couple of settings we usually play with here. Now, the one thing you notice as it, it differs from Call of Duty Mobile is Call of Duty, the screen refresh rate was, was dropped down to 60 Hertz. That's because of course, uh, Call of Duty really pretty much runs at 60 Hertz on this device. While uh, when it came to PUBG Mobile, it stayed at 120 Hertz. Not sure if that's what it will eventually run, but that's where the screen refresh rate stayed at. Now we've played our first game at um, uh, Ultra HD HD for PUBG Mobile, and we'll see what kind of performance we get from that. Let's go. The blue team has scored for the first time. Oh. 
So for PUBG Mobile Ultra HD HD, performance-wise, we got 40 frames per second at 100% stability. Again, this matches every device that we've tested that's high-end, from the Xiaomi um, Mi 11 to the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Uh, CPU usage was 10.81%, and of course, you can see memory usage is about 800 to about 930 um, uh, megabytes. So that kind of performance is pretty good, but how about Smooth Extreme on PUBG Mobile? Let's check that out. So at Smooth Extreme, again, the performance is similar to everything else in, in this class. We're talking about 60 frames per second standard, also 99% uh, FPS uh, stability, which is what we would like to see. The, the longer it stays at that, at its peak mark, the better it is. CPU usage is a little bit more at 13.23%, uh, which is quite interesting compared to uh, you know, Ultra HD HD. And memory usage is also slightly up in its average range. So that actually was pretty cool. Now, moving over to Fortnite. Fortnite's a game that I could not use Game Bench because it doesn't allow, allow USB debugging. But with Fortnite, you can play at 90 frames per second, not at epic resolutions, but of course at medium resolutions. At epic, you can play 60 frames per second, but I decided to check out 90 FPS. Now, while playing Fortnite and doing a terrible job in the Fortnite gameplay, just like I did in PUBG Mobile, so forgive me for that, uh, you will find out that the FPS doesn't necessarily reach 90 frames per second. It does roughly around uh, 60 to about 80 frames or so. Stayed in around 70 for a little bit. It all depends and differs. So this is a game that of course still has to be updated for this device and also the processor. But that's what we got for Fortnite in terms of gameplay capabilities. Moving over to a game that plays at 120 frames per second, although it didn't in our last device. I'm talking about Vainglory. And I know I am terrible at games like this, Mobus. But I have to say that Vainglory played well. You can see the FPS counter also switched to 120 frames per second. Uh, in terms of the FPS itself, but also when it came to the uh, screen refresh rate, it stayed at 120 hertz as well. So that actually matched all the way through and you will get the full benefits of what this device can actually do. Now, we did check out a bunch of other Android games as well. Um, and you can see the full list of games there and some of the FPS capabilities. But I wanted to just talk about, of course, Genshin uh, Impact, which is, of course, a game a lot of you have asked for and is graphically tasking. So we maxed out at 60 frames for Genshin. Uh, we maxed out all the settings and it ran really smooth on the Galaxy S21 Ultra, which is something we'd like to see. And uh, in terms of just looking at the in-depth look at the uh, FPS uh, capabilities, we saw 60 FPS for Genshin Impact, 100% FPS stability. Uh, CPU usage said was actually 0.02%. I don't think that is correct but its memory usage is much more at uh, uh, 1,577, uh, up between that range to 1,600 or so. So memory usage is much higher in this game, but what's interesting is that this, this technically beats out the iPhone 12 Pro Max, which actually was one of the better games handling Genshin uh, Impact, where the iPhone 12 Pro Max did 59 frames per second and an FPS stability of 97%. So the iPhone 12 Pro Max, yes, it's only one FPS smaller, but technically the Galaxy S21 Ultra beat it. So Android fanboys, you can rejoice. You've got your win right there. So that's actually pretty cool. But in terms of performance and uh, capabilities, what about Geekbench? What are the benchmarks there? I don't really care about these, but some of you like it. Uh, now Geekbench scores for single core is uh, 1100 for single core and our multi-core is uh, 3,238. 
uh, of course, which beats every last gen uh, Android device. Not so much with say something like the Xiaomi, which uh, had similar or close numbers or slightly higher in certain aspects. But that's just for you guys to know. Now, some of you did ask me about gameplay with emulators. How well does it run? So I did try out uh, a Dreamcast emulator and I also tried out a GameCube emulator, which of course Dolphin and uh, Redmi uh, emulators. I wasn't able to install and set up the PlayStation emulator in time. So I apologize for that. I'll try and I'll let you guys know the kind of performance I get from that. But when playing Dreamcast games, it ran well. It ran really well, it was getting 60 frames per second in Marvel vs. Capcom 2 on the Dreamcast. And that was great to see. Plus I was able to use my um, controller, my Razer Kishi on there with this emulator. It's a great emulator pickup. I'll you have the link for you guys down below. Uh, but it ran well playing Dreamcast games. Now moving over to GameCube games, uh, using the Dolphin emulator, uh, I was able to play Super Mario Sunshine. It was doing about 25, uh, 28 frames per second. Uh, but it looked like it ran well in general. I was playing on screen, so for that was uh, a little bit iffy. But emulators definitely run well on this. I'm sure you guys are gonna ask me for a ton of other games and I'll show you, I'll try and do some shorts and things like that, showing you different games and emulators on the Galaxy S21 Ultra. Now, finally, of course, streaming services. Now we got to play, uh, of course, Xbox Game Pass and Stadia. Uh, I was able to play a game on Game Pass uh, quite well uh, using touch controls on there, which I believe is Bloodstained. That actually played, played really well. And also Stadia ran really well using, of course, the Razer Kishi controller and gaming on there. And, and again, with streaming games, it's all about your connectivity, which is why having Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E is very important on a device like the Galaxy 21 Ultra and you know allowing you to connect as fast as possible making sure that connection is great plus of course 5g connectivity if you have it in your location makes a ton of sense now finally the main thing we care about of course is uh temperatures how are temperatures while gaming now i'll put it this way when i gamed on and off over a period of time my maximum temperatures were around 102 103 when I gamed uh, consistently and going through heavy, intense games, I actually pushed up to 109 degrees, which is probably the hottest I have seen for any Samsung device. So that is just something to take note, especially if you're gonna be doing a lot of heavy gaming on this device. In terms of gaming capabilities, the Galaxy S21 Ultra is a gaming beast. It will play your Android games effectively, streaming services, not a problem. Uh, it will also uh, play your emulators quite well. And the variable refresh rate does help actually in reducing in, in battery life and battery consumption. Plus a 5,000 milliamp battery goes a long way. Uh, now in terms of heat, uh, you know, that's something I will have to keep an eye on just using it a little bit more with this device just because Samsung didn't really mention anything about improving their vapor chambers or any of their sp specific cooling on the, uh, the Galaxy S21 Ultra. But I would say you can definitely use a case on there and you'll be fine. Uh, I use my Samsung um, leather case and I actually had no issues with that. Also, you know, I like to use uh, speaking cases and you can check out their cases as well. They've got some really cool cases that give you nice thermal cooling and also some better grip while you are gaming. So hopefully that gives you guys an idea of how gaming is on the Galaxy S21 Ultra. This is a gaming beast and has a great performance. If you have any questions, any comments, let me know. Otherwise, guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment.